One of the companies uh, that is instrumental in uh, uh, pushing technology uh, worldwide, uh, apart from metric mines, uh, is uh, Pixelmonda, uh, where our first speaker hails from. Um, we have five outstanding speakers holding four talks um, uh, throughout the day with long breaks, uh, so uh, you can all enjoy the showroom we have prepared for you uh, round a few corners on this level. I'll say a few words about that uh, uh, after the talk. Each talk will be roughly about 45 minutes with about 15 minutes Q&A afterwards if you're interested. Um, uh, so I will be taking your questions and passing them on. But our first speaker, as I said, is from uh, a company called Pixelmondo, which uh, no doubt most of you are very well aware of. Pixelmondo is a special effects company um, that was uh, founded very near Frankfurt, uh, by now has many offices all, almost all over the world, uh, in Los Angeles, I believe, in Shanghai. Um, uh, it's a huge success story. They have uh, been producing special effects for movies um, uh, such as Hugo Cabret, a Scorsese film, uh, for Iron Man 2, for The Hunger Games, uh, for TV series. Um, uh, um, there's... Um, uh, Right. Okay. Okay. Of course. Of course. Um, so I mean, they are um, they are uh, in the a leader in their field, and of course they're at the crossroads of uh, various entertainment media and and industries. So who better to uh, uh, um, tell us about the challenges and uh, the potential of uh, VR and related technologies? Um, not just for gaming, but way beyond, then uh, pick some wonder. So please welcome um, with me the um, uh, chief operating officer of uh, the company, as well as the managing producer, Pascal Tanaka. <laughs> Hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Before I uh, continue, I just need to unplug and plug in back again. So you will see something. That is because not the whole event is virtual, you know. Just give me a second. Yes. So, um, as I said, hello and good morning, everyone. I'm very uh, pleased to be here. It's, to be honest, my first time um, also taking place or um, being an attendee of the Fravia. I just had the opportunity last year to hop in for the very last 15 minutes. Um, we were also pretty keen to be part of it because um, in our understanding, we are also part of the game industry somehow, but we are not gamers. That's the big difference. So this is what I'm going to explain you over what we, what we are doing, what our operation fields are. And uh, to give you an over, overview of a few showcases, I have a few case um, movies with me. I'm going to live present with the HoloLens as well. And we'll invite you later on to do so by yourself because it's a totally different experience if you do it by yourself uh, down in our showroom. Um, as we were also already introduced, we are a visual effects company. That is where we came from. Um, founded in, in Funkstadt, which is very close by 2001. Um, so we now run s um, seven offices within three um, continents. So it's uh, two times it's in China, so two times in Canada, then we have two times in Germany, and um, also an office where our CEO and owner is sitting in Los Angeles. But it's not only him, there's a big team as well. And um, we are, I would say, um, yes, we are known for our visual effects work, especially in um, feature film. So we had the honor to win one of the Academy Awards uh, for the Martin Scorsese, Scorsese film, but we also were honored by being uh, nominated two times more. Um, unfortunately, we didn't make it, but um, I would say that there was a good reason for it because the other were, were pretty good, to be honest, even better. 
but that's another that's another topic. So, but, but we also do episodic um, and TV series. Um, pretty much or well known is our work on uh, Game of Thrones, where we are um, creating the designs of the dragons, uh, but also doing a lot of more. We animate them, of course, as well, and um, are responsible for quite a lot of the scenes. Uh, it started all for Pixamondo in season two, where we did the whole visual effects on the, on the whole um, um, season. Nowadays, over 30 companies are working on visual effects on Game of Thrones. That's quite a big deal because so many things need to be produced within a short time, but that's another topic. We're not going to talk about this too much. So we also do in themed entertainment. So I don't know if you know what that, that means, that um, if you ever have been to a, a Freizeitpark, like the Europa Park or something like this, or worldwide, we are partnering since a few years with the Wonder Group and producing um, really outstanding and also won a few prizes for that, um, visual effects and content, especially for large screen projections and moving platform uh, immersive um, experiences, but n not just uh, moving platforms, also all kind of virtual reality uh, applications for, for that field. So therefore, we were, we're thinking of already since a few years, there must be another vertical. So we're dealing with 3D assets quite a lot. We are known for our outstanding visual work. So why not shift this within another business? And then this all, it started with augmented re reality a few years ago. And, and therefore, it was a small step. Then the, the whole industry changed. There were a few game uh, changers that created some hardware pieces, which made the whole process way easier. And we also hopped on that. But we're not just producing content. We also have a fab lab um, with almost 700 square meters where we produce own hardware and try to test, verify all the software applications content that we are producing and uh, try and even to, to um, yeah, to, to improve the given hardware solution so far to make the best experience. That's also the aim, always the aim from Pixelmondo, creating the best experience somehow. So, which brings me to why I'm here. Um, we also do advertising, but um, uh, just, just to give you an overview, why all these topics come together and, and, and really run into this, let's say, we don't do this much VR, we also do VR, but we do more this mixed reality um, because it, mixed reality means so much more. It can include sensors, it can inc include sound, it can ex include smell, um, a whole experience. It's more than just the reality. It's every time you expand um, your, your real life environment with something, um, then it's more an expanded reality or mixed reality. And uh, this is what we're really aiming for, to give the viewer and the, the the, our guests, cause, because we always try to invite the people, th the best possible experience. Um, to give you a little overview how this looks like, so an over, uh, overall overview of Pixelmondo, just a little introduction on, on, the, on the video side, and then I'm talking more about what we're actually here for. Enjoy. My friends, I address you all as you truly are. Wizards, travelers, adventurers, magicians, come and dream with me. Hey you, can I learn your flavor? It's brand new. Now it's in the papers, all I seem to see. Must be something underneath.
so much. Um, maybe a few things were quite um, noble, noticeable. Maybe you recognize the one or the other film. Um, but I would guess that almost like 50% of the visual effects we created in just in the show really didn't even recognize. Because um, it's not always about crash, boom, bang, being loud and um, doing all this explosive stuff. It's even more um, subtitled some, sometimes. But let's switch off to the other topic. So what we also do is, while we're here, we're not doing games. We're not game developers at all. So we do not have the capacities. We do not have um, the experience, long, long year experience in creating outstanding games, which is a, a task for a thousand of people, to be honest, worldwide. But we play with the same tools, let's say. I, I really say play because that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, um, this device over here is, is a HoloLens. Uh, this I'm, work, I'm using on a, let's say, daily basis now um, because I'm so keen and, and fascinated by this kind of technology that gives you, give us all so many opportunities and will change the whole thing within the next few years. But um, therefore, I, come, um, I will say about this a little bit later more. So um, as I said up front, so we're working quite a lot, not just with the VR technologies, we're also using sensors, we develop stuff like this, so we, we can work with all the, um, the actual device that you can find on the market, um, but we also develop our own stuff. So, but let's come to something which is um, something that I can show, because that is our biggest problem. We're doing quite a lot of, of um, projects, but we are not allowed to show them. This is a very big problem because yes, yes, you earn money, you earn reputation, but just within the client. But if you're not allowed to talk about something or to show it, then you got a really big problem. That is one of the biggest problem in this operation field within Pixelmondo. So I'm very, very glad and a big, big shouting out, a very big thanks to Siemens that we are able to show this and even to showcase this here because this was one of the first projects we, um, we, um, uh, we created starting back again already three years, something like this. It's the fourth iteration right now, starting as a tool for the designers, um, because they always were used to the work with the CAD data, and they could never explore the, the, the actual train designs before they made a mock-up. So, but mock up or uh, pro uh, prototyping is a really expensive process. So we used this and said, we had this idea, so let's do something in VR, because then you got the opportunity to, to explore this, let's do it in real time. And um, so we started with the first iteration, and we're now, as I said, we are up to the fourth iteration. This is a tool uh, which gives you more than over uh, 800 parameters that you can adjust in real time, everything. Um, you can switch different markets, you can um, switch the, the whole thing, like the wide of the, of the tracks. Uh, the doors, everything, but it's not just about the look. You can even explore, this is not, not static as it looks like here, you can move actually in and around. Uh, and it's not just the exterior, it's also the inside, which, I'm, uh, which is going to show later on. Everything uh, can be adjusted, can be um, customized as you need this. And, the, and Siemens is nowadays using this as a sales and marketing tool. So we, we, we made a switch from a, a, let's say, first mover, for, for Siemens in this kind of direction, a VR application which was made for designers now to an official sales and marketing tool. Um, so you mentioned Bombardier. 
um, earlier. They're also doing, Rolf, you did so, they're also doing um, a virtual reality to get ex or to really explore the, the future uh, designs and even all the prototyping and the next step will be training. So if you created something like this, just imagine what you can do. You can um, train all your experts. you can even uh, train them or to do maintenance even before the actual thing is built. And that is one of the next um, things that's going to happen. It uh, will play a re huge role and that is one of the operation fields of Pixelmondo as well. Um, so just to give you an idea. So if you want to explore this, it might not look as fancy as some of the games, but it got a diff total different approach, I can tell. So um, I talked about the theme park entertainment, and uh, this is um, something I also want to show because it's quite similar. You got a real big screen, it's an immersive experience because everything is aligned, your movement is aligned to, to um, what you actually see, and this is a very, very big topic when it comes to virtual reality. So people always, um, they always, um, how do you say this? Um, now I lost it, I'm sorry. Um, telling about, oh, I got this problem with motion sickness, blah, 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 blah. So maybe you do because things are not aligned. You need to really, if you want to create an experience, you need to make sure that what you see in VR is more or less something that you can align with your body in the reality. So how, how to do this? If you align the um, movement within your actual world to the, to the virtual world. So therefore, this is a good use case because it is a theme park entertainment, but what we do when we um, create such experience, we work in VR to get a better idea how the experience will later on uh, have an effect to the, uh, to, the, to the audience. And we also created an own um, motion platform set up there for, which we also um, handed over to some clients. We had a, a, a huge exhibition for ZF um, um, car automotive parts, which is one of the global players. Um, on their last fair trade and where we created some really nice things on this motion platform base. And uh, just to give you a short overview, this is how it looks like. Pixamundo has produced and collaborated on a variety of themed entertainment around the world, from thrilling ride experiences to interactive installations. Pixamundo's themed entertainment division engages a worldwide client base in the collaboration production of unique large format film projects. Blah, blah, blah. Pixamundo, Pixamundo, yes. Um, as you can see, this is a moving platform that shifts just in 10 seconds from um, horizontal to vertical, and then you really dive into. This is something that we also made or um, I transported it back or uh, switch it back to a real VR experience, which you can explore on a motion platform as a single experience. So um, it's a classical, let's say, half dome, but of course we also do the full dome stuff. And this is, there's no better opportunity to review and to get an, a better creative approach than to um, explore this in VR. So it, VR is a big tool for us nowadays into, into the creation process. Um, also the mixed reality, but um, this I'm going to explore a little bit later, how we use these tools to actually be even better in what we are doing so far. And we won a few prizes already. Let's see where we can go to. <laughs> hmm. Nice pictures, but you need to explore this. Yeah? Otherwise it doesn't make any sense. It's just boom, bang, and a lot of, oh yeah, it looks great. But even it looks great, I mean, it's not too bad. Okay, so let's, let's uh, switch on. What are we doing with mixed reality? One of the operation fields in mixed reality or use cases you can do is use it as a sales and marketing tool as well. And uh, not just sitting at home or being in the, um, do this somewhere, bring the people into a, a showroom where you show VR, where you isolate people, to be honest. Sorry to say so. Um, it's, it's a more open world thing if you use a device like the HoloLens or there are others on the market as well, you have the opportunity to open up a new world within your real life environment. That means that um, 
you can talk to the people. So uh, when I <laughs> when I prepped myself for this uh, little speak here, uh, and the people came in and so oh no he's uh, he's somewhere else he's in the VR and then I said hello and uh, oh you can see me yes I can see you I can even interact with you I can speak to you while I'm doing some other things, and uh, this is the thing that amazes me the most to be honest, that you're not in this isolated world. Uh, even if you do not have all the opportunities that you have in VR, you have quite a little bit more maybe, because um, it's, e it's not so easy to tell. It's not easy to showcase this on a case film. You need to explore this by yourself. That's why I said, come over, take your time, make a little experience by yourself. But I'm going to show you, try to show you how this maybe look like. This was uh, made, um, um, for this uh, this year's fair ca uh, car fair trade, the IA, EAA, sorry, sorry for that. And um, you will recognize the brand when you see it. Maybe some of them already recognize it. And uh, this is how it looks like. It's just a little little glimpse that we are uh, allowed to show. Paint, rotate, stop. And this is how it actually looks like. So it's perfectly aligned to your perspective. Um, it feels real, it's stereoscopic, it's 3D. You can walk around, you can explore from all sides, you can configure. This is just one tool that's a car configurator, uh, obviously. but. Therefore, you got the opportunity to bring, let's say, something like a car or a train or, or whatever into the, the, the spot where it needs to be. Is, is it either the point of sales? Is it a fair trade? Is it maybe it's your garage? Whatever it is. So and uh, to, uh, and it's different. Um, I guess that almost every one of you already explored something like an augmented reality experience. So who did so? Okay, so I'm on the right place. Yes. Um, but the, the problem with classical AR is that it's, even if it's, it's a stereo 3D image somehow, it's still on a flat screen and you have to handheld it and you need to move around. It's not the same kind of experience. Just when you got something like a goggle on your, on your nose and you see it and it's perfectly within your field of view, even there's just a 40 degrees field of view at the moment with this device, it's stunning to be honest. Um, for me, it's my personal behalf, so I don't know what you think about, but you need to figure it out by yourself. Um, so this makes a huge, huge difference in how you interact and how you recognize virtual objects, because they're not, they don't feel virtual anymore. Even, it's not about the quality, the visual quality, it's not about the opportunities that you have, because this is voice commanded, this is, uh, you can use gestures, you can do whatever. We're also going to showcase a few uh, prototypes, which might maybe also change this a little bit more, bring it more to the mass market, because this is a big issue. This is three and a half to five and a half thousand euros, so it's not affordable to everyone. But if you give the people the opportunity to explore mixed reality within their normal life without the big um, money spent, without a big in, uh, investment, so I will, I really believe that this will be a game changer somehow. So just imagine what you can do with this. This is a purpose for, for architects. So you can view your model, of course, see it from all different sides, angles, ex well, see the structure, see how it, how it uh, behaves like or how it looks like. This is just uh, a model loaded into an asset viewer, which is part of the, uh, one of the initial tools in, in HoloLens. Um, it's not just about a model. It's not just about a small thing. You can also pump it up to real life size and really walk around in it. I'm going to showcase uh, a piece of it later when it works because let's see, normally do so. But this gives you a total different, this allows you to even explore your own creativity in a total different way because uh, in the past you had to do everything on a screen but you don't have to do so anymore. You don't have to, yeah, get into the real shit. Let's say it like this. It's, it's easy like this. Get into, dive into it, explore it, try to be the best uh, that you can be, but 
wouldn't it be fancy to walk around in your house, not just plays like one of the f most famous AR app nowadays where you can place a, a, a chair. Oh, fancy, I can place a chair. Oh, it sticks like there, perfect. So no, just, <laughs> just imagine, you can change all the wallpapers, you can change um, the sofas, whatever, but actually you walk through. And that's a big difference. So what for can it is uh, used also is um, what I mentioned to it, for construction and maintenance. Um, and this is an idea that is not by Pixamondo, just to give you, just to be beware, beware of, but this is just an opportunity. As well. So we are, that's what I meant. I cannot show everything because we're not allowed to, but I can showcase more or less similar tasks that we are working on. Just imagine you have something like a blueprint, blueprint and then uh, you can um, even play around, uh, do a little bit of your work on the model, but then give it a real life size and all the parts are aligned with your, um, with your parts history or library actually. So you can really uh, maintain on something like the real thing. You can m train the people, that's what I mentioned uh, with the Siemens and the train generation in the, in the future. This is an, a construction site which is not built yet, but you can even start training on that. And uh, if you align this with the, the real deal, let's say the real life, you can even say this is a trigger, or this is a, um, a tool, this is a, um, an object, and then I get all the necessary information. I can even interact with an operator or with a, with a higher a skilled professional uh, who gives me some uh, more or better insight how to maintain this. So this is... Um, I really love that. I don't know how to say this, but that's just an idea. So come to one of the actual projects which we are allowed to show. We created something in VR. Uh, we call it EVE, the experimental virtual environment, because um, we had a total different approach. We started with this by 2013 with the early prototypes that we had in hand, um, then uh, finished it in 2014. And since there, we are developing this thing on, uh, let's say, professional behalf. So we showed it, showcase this to the clients and they tell us how they will use it, how they can use it, uh, what, what are the needs and everything. Um, you can explore a piece of it, not everything of it, but uh, one of the, let's say, uh, the basic platforms uh, in the showcase as well, hopefully it will run, um, because I just brought the equipment today. Uh, and still lagging off a monitor, if some one of you have a monitor in your pocket, please hand it over. Um, <laughs> And this is how it looks like and what we can do with it. Everything's also in real time, of course. So the buzzwords, that's exactly what it's, what it's for, to get analytics. Um, it's also not just a showroom uh, tool, which you can find uh, similar nowadays, let's say at Audi or uh, all the other German car brands, uh, which is pretty fam famous at the moment. But we started with this in 2013, finished this in 2014, and weren't allowed to talk about it. So this, this is one of the big issues. So we could be maybe one of the, uh, the, the main players in this field era also, but we are not. <laughs> obviously, but we are still working on it and nowadays trying to um, find out a way how to create pro um, projects which allow us to even speak about it because otherwise it doesn't make any sense if you want to go further within the company or you have an exclusive deal and you earn 20 million a month, which is not going to happen. Um, 
But this is just as uh, as it uh, was by the buzzwords. You have the opportunity to change everything. It's not just a configurator. You can even uh, have a kind of driving experience because therefore we're also using the moving platform. You sit in this thing and then you, you shake around yeah, like you used to uh, know from, uh, from, I don't know, here the German, the, the, the Dippermess, they also have kind of <laughs> this kind of experiences somehow. Um, it, it feels way better if the, uh, as I as said up front, if the movements are aligned and everything. And that's, that's a real experience. It's not just by the word experience, it is an experience and that is the different. So, um, I have to look at my time, I'm pretty good, so. Um, what I wanted to do now, I try, that's, I'm really saying I'm trying to set up a um, live stream between the HoloLens and my computer. I'm doing this on my, uh, with a hotspot I created by myself, but I do not have the best connection within this building. So hopefully, maybe I have to restart it quite a few times, but I wanted, will, will really want to show you how it feels like. Don't be uh, irritated because it's not the real deal, what you will see, because the perspective is not correct. It's, there's an, a built-in camera, it's 720p, which I think is quite okay. Uh, could be better, but I mean, this device is still in prototype mode. Uh, mode. It's a dev, uh, dev kit. And um, it, even it got a perfect product design to my eyes. Um, <laughs> it works pretty good, so let's try it. Let's do the switch. Can someone just give me a little trommel wirbel? <laughs> no. I know it looks a bit stupid, but uh, it doesn't look as stupid over here. I always re um, receive some weird reactions when I'm doing this in plane or something, <laughs> because I'm, to be honest, I'm somehow also weird. And um, trying to prep whenever the time is, um, whenever I have time for this. And sometimes it happens on the plane as well. And then the people really ask me, what are you doing? And last time I was on my way back from Madrid, last week, this week, I don't know anymore. Um, I was doing around, doing all this kind of gestures and then the, uh, the person came to me, so sorry, sir, I'm really confused. Um, what did you want? What do you, <laughs> do you want to order something? I said, uh, um, I'm totally sorry, I'm just doing a presentation. I'm prepping a presentation. He was so confused because all the time, pew, pew, so maybe it looks stupid, but it makes sense to me. And I'm already, I'm already seeing something that you don't see, which is pretty cool. But yeah, but you will see it as well. So I'm starting up with something obvious, to be honest. Maybe I have to. Yeah, there you go. I'm nervous, somehow. I don't make a large screen because then most of the time it doesn't work. So what do you see over here? Uh, maybe you can recognize this is Drogon uh, in actual real life size. It, this means this dragon has uh, a length of more than 35 meters. It doesn't even fit in the room. But I can ignore the room parameters if I want to. I can work with room scales or I can just ignore them. So we use this kind of tool to get our animator the best impression of how a virtual uh, creature, uh, creature, because it's also a virtual creature, um, would feel like. Just imagine, you need, to, you need to create something. I don't know if you have seen Game of Thrones or you're a fan or not fan, but have seen the latest season. Just imagine there's this guy called Jon Snow, this, uh, this character. So he, he sees the dragon for the first time, he really gets close to it. So it's a scary moment. So how can you animate something which you cannot explore by yourself? We did so in the past and we did pretty well. But uh, with this technology, this, uh, this gave us the opportunity to do an even better job. And I would say, in, I really believe that the last season we did was the best season we ever did in visual effects wise. And so you can really go pretty close. It's not an animated scene. You can also do animation scenes by not in this case. Um, and you can get a better idea of, of you see, it, am I like this? Um, you can you get a sense for the mass, for the, for the, yeah, for a creature like this. This gives you a whole new idea that is, that is, I don't know, it freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> um, 
and I still see you, that even freaks me out more. Uh, <laughs> but just to give you an idea, it, uh, this device is made on a daylight purpose, uh, but, but it also works, which surprised me quite often, within uh, limited darkness environments. And what the trick is, because normally, and that is uh, Alexander, Alexander, a friend of mine from a company, Cosa Looks. I promote you all the time. <laughs> um, he's also working quite, uh, quite often with the HoloLens, and he knows that it's a really big problem to create something which is black. Because black is a black box. Uh, actually, it's not. It's there to, to be hidden. Uh, so you need to really work on the shaders to create something. This is a black dragon, so that's why it's so high transparent. Or uh, the opacity is like it is. But Still, it, got, it gives you an idea how this can be like. And we also have flight cycles. We created flight cycles, within, with, which are not allowed to show, to show because this is something proprietary. proprietary. Uh, but this gives our animators the opportunity to really get the best deal out of it. So this is just one thing. What we're also using this uh, device for, because we work in quite a lot with green screens, but we want to get rid of green screens. So, But how to do so? We thought, okay, let's uh, work with HoloLens and HoloLens style, uh, style devices uh, and use the opportunity to mirror or to, to get the, the mixed reality world out of the, of the device into a real camera, in the, film, uh, in the film camera. So what we're doing at the moment, we're working on virtual um, sets, which we bring into the real life scenario. So this is still loading. It's not? Uh, okay. It's so amazing. <laughs> cannot see. Well, no, no, it's too good for you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just give me a second. This is uh, just to give you an idea. That's not the real environment, but just to give you an idea. So what I can do. This is uh, actually this is a living room and bedroom situation. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. can you see it? Uh, it's also in real life size. I can move around in, within it. And even so in in my impression, so I don't see the people anymore because it's so dense. I don't know what to, I can look because I have a feeling. Oh, um, <laughs> and therefore, I can walk around in a virtual set. So I see the bed sheets, I see the come up, I see a sofa, I see everything. I can even, in the internal integration that we have, I can move around the objects. So I can take one of the chairs, remove it, and take it somewhere else. So this is a kind of uh, idea for a digital um, set. And you see the tracking. I, I, did not, I did not even scan the room before. I just came over here, turned on the device, said, OK, this is going to happen. And it works out of the box. That's, the, that's why I love the HoloLens, to be honest. So this is, I don't know if you can imagine how this would change our work in classical um, um, visual effects. But not just our work. So, uh, if you have ever been on set shooting mm -hmm. with a virtual setup, um, you know that you you need to have something like a, a mixer where you mix the the, the, the um, pre-rendered content somehow, and then uh, with the with the live camera to get an idea how it's going to look like. So, if the director and the and the uh, the DOP are wearing this, those kind of devices. Uh, or you even mirror the, uh, the virtual assets within the uh, real-life camera. So you don't have to mix it anymore. It's permanently there. It's tracked. You can move around. The camera is aligned to it. Every movement is aligned to it. This will change the whole thing. And that's what we're working on it on the moment. So this is something that I just can show. I cannot show everything, but I can invite people if they want to really explore how it's like. They can sign something like an NDA, they can give a thousand euros, and then they can have a look at it. Maybe it's 10,000 euros, but this is on a personal deal. Never said something like this. So, that, okay, next, next thing. Asset production is also something that we have to deal quite often with. So as we're working on the actual um, Star Wars Discovery uh, TV series, we have to deal with quite a lot of um, Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not allowed to, to talk about Star Trek. Therefore, I said Star Wars. <laughs> um, so this we're also using for the first view on uh, models. This is a bird of prey. Uh, it's not textured yet. Uh, but I don't know if someone of you, uh, someone of you, have already seen the actual Star Trek TV series. Of course. 
Um, they're lagging a bit of content, but it get better uh, episode by episode. But visualize it looks pretty good, and I would say maybe that's. Pixel Mondo is doing most of the effects, so um, that's part of our work, that's what we're doing, and that's how we work with the, with the assets, to get an idea, to get even a scaling thing. Now, of course, the vertebrae is way bigger, that's why I scaled it down, uh, but um, so this also helps not just the animators, this helps, helps also the, um, the um, asset production, the modelers, the texture artists and everything to get a better idea. And therefore, we will even more and increase even more the the access to uh, for all the artists to work with those kinds of devices to make our work even better in the future. So maybe we should get something like a permanent ab abonnement for an Oscar, uh, <laughs> because if, if this won't, no, that was a. But I still like it. I guess it was a nice joke. Um, so. <laughs> This is just one thing, and uh, I showed you a little clip of the uh, last fair, uh, car fair trade. So this is how it actually looks like. As you see, you see nothing, but this takes a little while because of the new application. I'm going to load it. Um, this is what we are allowed to show. Where is it? Oh, cool. Yeah. See, that's the, that's the moment of being live. Sorry. Can I close and start it all over again? No problem. We call it Mr. Car, Mixed Reality Car Configurator. Isn't that a fancy name? Mr. Car. That's for you to check the smart. So, obviously, it's made in Unity. Give a big applause for Unity. So uh, what you see over here is a German car brand, which I'm not allowed to show, therefore there's no logo on it. Um, that's just a little info dashboard that gives you the voice commands, so I can hide the info. I do so like hide info, hide info, perfect. And then I have um, different opportunities like rotate. Rotate. Ah, thank you so much. So, even here, I didn't scan the room or anything like this, and it's lagging because of, because of the streaming. It, it doesn't lag if you wear it by yourself and you don't stream. Um, but it's pretty stable as well. The visual look, it's not too bad. For me, it's real life size. It's not for you. Otherwise, you would be dead. <laughs> but, uh, real life, wait. It's even not real life, uh, real life weight, yes. So I can change the colors like paint. Oh, I can't. But paint, yes. As I said, it's not so easy to uh, show a color like black, but it's possible. Paint, rims, rims, <coughs> yes. And, uh, because this got a special kind of engine uh, by a company which is more related to the, if you just add one up, then it's B. Well, oh, I don't know. It's AMD, fuck it. So, um, <laughs> engine. Surprisingly nothing. Engine. Come on. Engine. Imagine you got something uh, on your own, uh, sitting on your own nose, you see through it, you can explore a car, which is, this is a, a car which you can actually buy, but just imagine the next iteration of a car that you cannot buy at the moment, but you can explore it. Uh, just to give you an idea, because you not just can only see it from the outside, you can also hop into the inside. Uh, Different car, different brand, same application, different commands, because you can choose. 
if you do it uh, by voice command, by gestures, we also uh, created a um, companion app which works on watches, on, on mobile devices in any kind, and rotate. Rotate. Thanks. Um, which was done by the very first time uh, for a HoloLens device to create something like this. And we um, even started just this year, but in January, to work with the, with the HoloLens. So you can man manipulate everything. This is more for a host and guest situation. Just imagine, if, because you can do this with 20 people at the same time, there's one kind of moderator uh, who um, is beware of the whole show. Give you all the content that you need. You can um, implement videos as well, all kind of data sheets. Uh, you can give some more inf detailed information about the parts, whatever you need. You can also use this for training purposes. But uh, let's go inside or interior. I don't know anymore. This is uh, the older version. Let's say inside. Yeah, smile. <laughs> uh, interior. No, I guess it's inside, to be honest. Uh, inside. Yeah. And then you have a uh, totally 360, because that's a different... Uh, HoloLens just has, as I said before, uh, 40 degrees of view field. But you can also deal with uh, 360 panoramas. And then... Oh, I need to move slower. Then you can see it like this. And you can really get a feeling of how this car is made from the inside. And you can even, if you want to, you can um, add some hotspots and then get some more information about the functionalities and stuff like this. But this is how a HoloLens can be used. This is just an idea. So it's about all of the creativity of the clients, whatever you can think we can produce. Oh, that's awesome. uh, whatever you think we can produce. Maybe we should use this as a claim. Yeah, I don't mind because I'm done. So therefore, I would say thank you for your attention. I invite you all to explore it by yourself, live. As we said, live und in Farbe in Germany. Just come over to our little booth. It's just a small one. But if you start over there, there are many things from metric mines, from um, um, universities, from other uh, people I do not know at the moment, but I'm pretty <laughs> pretty sure that they created outstanding content. It's so the it's worth the visit. Enjoy it. Thank you so much for your attention. Right. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a little bit uh, of time for questions. As long as they're not related about related to Game of Thrones and Star Trek Discovery, right? Um, uh, Show some uh, Game of Thrones material? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that at the end. <clears throat> Does anyone immediately have any questions? Right. Um, so you said it's a standalone device, the HoloLens. Um, is it possible to just design a, a piece of art or a, a, a model on the desktop and just get it somehow easy onto the HoloLens to, to work easy, easy with it. Um, I guess I don't need the microphone because I didn't. Okay, I use it. I hate it. Um, of course you can do because uh, as I uh, mentioned, there is a asset tool um, where you just you used to work with FBX files. So it's an easy work. Uh, you, you push them via a OneDrive open up on the HoloLens uh, the, the application, um, uh, share or cl uh, click the, the asset you want to view, and that's it. Instantly, that's what I just did with the um, with Drogon and uh, the Bird of Prey, and even the set, it's, it's not even an application. So for easy, it's a quick review tool, let's, let's call it like this. And it uh, depends on how you develop for the HoloLens, if you do it in Visual Studio or in Unity, I would prefer Unity, it's way easier, and then you can iterate even faster uh, and quicker uh, turnarounds and everything like this. But um, if you want to get out the best of the device, you need to use Visual Studio, but it's not handy, to be honest. Thank you very much for this um, 
splendid presentation, really thrilling. I have to think about it and learn more about it. Just a short question. Who developed the basic technology for this device you just explained? And I would like to know a little bit more about the people you cooperate with. Do you have people who work in Asia, for example? How can you develop and create it all? If you say we develop further things in the future, where are these studios where you develop it? Thank you. So um, this device was um, developed by a company called Pixelmondo. We bought it a few years ago. And uh, no, it's Microsoft, actually. <laughs> they spent millions and trillions and uh, billions of um, dollars to, uh, um, yeah, to develop this device. And nowadays, I would say there are not even more than 2,000 of HoloLens is available on the, on the global market. Um, this is just one, one answer. So it's, sadly, it's not done by us. But otherwise, if we could do something like this, we would be really rich. And I'm not standing here. I would be somewhere at the Caribbean, to be honest, because the weather is way nicer. Uh, maybe on the moon, but I can be on the moon every time if I want to, because I have some nice applications <laughs> with the solar system. So I can be in the moon as well. No, but to be, to be serious, uh, when I'm talking about we are developing, then I mean, it's not somewhere in Asia, it's not somewhere in the States, it's actually happening in Germany. So um, Stuttgart and Frankfurt are working quite hard to achieve new stunning things. As I said, we have a fab lab where we create um, not just software solutions, not just applications, it's also hardware driven. And uh, we have quite a bunch of, uh, of technology over there in different pieces. We just launched a, a new uh, interactive show in New York at the um, Times Square for National Geographic called, uh, let, let me get, it's, uh, ocean, it's Encounter Ocean Odysseys. That's, that's, uh, that's the name. Um, where you can be, where you can explore the the world of the, as it says, the oceans, all the flora and fauna, everything you can find within the sea, you can explore over there. Uh, it's driven by different kind of sensors. Um, you can attract plankton on the floor, on the walls. Uh, as more plankton is attracted, you you attract other uh, species as fishes, and and if you do it quite often, then also a whale will come, show up, and, and try to eat everything. But you can learn quite a lot, and therefore I would say all these 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 are tools. So, as I said, just just open up your mind, think about what you can do with this, and I would say especially for educational um, application, this is one of the best things, because um, I'm 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 using this also for my kids, because I'm uh, a mind shaper. And uh, <laughs> um, just to give you an uh, insight, last uh, two weeks ago, my uh, youngest one, he's nine, had to um, give a, speak, a speech in, the, in the school about the solar system. And uh, he was really, really into it and learned everything about the planets, the size, and so. And we, we learned together. And after he was done with his studying, I uh, um, gave him the opportunity, because I'm also on the, these devices at home, um, to explore how it's actually going to feel like or how it, how it is in a scale and somehow. And then I opened the application done by Microsoft. It's the solar system. And he was really into it. Two hours, he was totally lost, but he learned something. And he had a, the, the best idea that I could give him about our solar system within a device like this. So therefore, I would say, go for it. If you, if you want to bring over your kids, no matter, 1,000 euros, 10,000 euros, we can talk about it. I'll go for it too, down here to the next question. It's a good walking simulator, I should do this more often. Hey, um, as we all can figure out, you really enjoy the HoloLens and the augmented reality experience, but uh, it's a new technology and it's not perfect. The hardware is not, real, not the best yet, uh, so you can't do everything on it. You have limitations regarding the polygons and uh, what you do with, uh, regarding processing powers. And um, so I'm also curious about your lessons learned um, regarding limitations uh, in the t from a technical perspective and from, I don't know, when you try to, um, try to uh, make your ideas come to an augmented reality and you hit a wall or something like that, that would be very interesting. So um, you want to have a serious answer, yes? yes? So then first of all, don't be so German. Sorry. 
<laughs> That's a, you're talking about limitations. You're talking about um, technical limitations, visual limitations. So you got a device over here that operates for four hours, gives you opportunities you never had so far. That's I'm really get pissed off every time, to be honest, when I'm talking to people and they say, ah, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. What you can do with this, explore it. Do it by yourself. Find out what you can do with it and make the best out of it. And then do not complain. Because complaining is so easy. So I can complain, so maybe all oh, the weather is shit, so I would rather be, should be somewhere else. But I do not. I did before, yeah. just a few. <laughs> but it was, that was a joke. I love my country. I love Germany and the weather situation. No, but, but really. Um, it's not about the limitations. Of course, we're running into limitations and we have to deal with it. And every time and we have to, we're struggling and we need to find out a solution to get the ideas done that we want to produce. But isn't it like this in every topic on every kind of project that you never did before? So therefore, I would say really try to make the best out of the given resources. And then there will be a next iteration. Pixamondo is working on a on their own technology. Maybe this is going to happen in March as a little... <laughs> okay, lass die Katze aus dem Saal. We are magically. <laughs> no, we're not, sorry. Um, no, we're also working on own devices and prototypes like this to bring, to, to use the actual power of, let's say, our mobile computers that we're wearing nowadays, we call mobile devices. Of course, my, my cell phone over there got much more power processor-wise and uh, uh, CPU and GPU-wise than this device because this was, before it was announced to the market, it was already four years in, t in development. So it's an i7 uh, fifth generation. Yeah? So this, this uh, little laptop over here or a tablet got an i7 seventh generation, got a better graphic and everything like this, but it's not, that's not important. Yeah? If you want to learn how to work to, to get the bet best out of it, you can always talk on a personal side because that's all I can say at the moment. Sorry. If there's not an immediate question, I um, have a follow-up question regarding um, the last one. Um, of course, it's important to, to uh, work on hardware that's sort of you know, up and coming, um, but you ruled out in your talk, uh, you were quite hesitant about augmented reality, um, but don't you think something like Pokemon Go was really a showcase for the potential of what you can do with a device that, after all, every one of us has got in their pocket? Yes. Um, therefore, I would say, uh, just think about the different kind of use cases. Pokemon Go, my kids love Pokemon Go. Um, and all the parents within uh, my fr um, of my friends and uh, the kids of my friends, they love Pokemon Go as well because they said, oh, but they're really running outside. They're at least two hours outside, so they haven't been before because they were all sitting in their rooms. That's not the case. Um, I also think that augmented reality is, is quite a cool thing because it attracted me for the first time. I made my first augmented reality project in 2000. It even, they even had a name like augmented reality. It was Teleimmersion, so um, at the Expo 2000. But um, from this very first moment, it, it caught my attention. And therefore, of course, augmented reality is, uh, is a big changer because you can, you can get so much additional information. You got a device always with you. You don't need to have a fancy handset or anything like this. So it's a very good starting point. That's it. Right, any other questions? <laughs> yeah, don't do a mic drop, please. We've only got one. We got, I mean, it's soft floor, but no? Oh yeah, right at the very back. This is very good for my health. Thank you. Okay, let me just, thank you so much. I have, a, I have an even more uh, specific question. The HoloLens is measuring the room. Are you able to position it at a specific place or do you move it in the room? Where do you want to have it? Um, I can do both. I can anchor. Um, uh, Just wait a second, please. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the people on Facebook. Okay, Here we go. Okay. Um, as a, yes, we can do both. Um, I can anchor an object or an application and say uh, it should happen on a specific point within the room, or I can say like um, 
a different kind of application, even the car configurator. By a voice command, I can re um, repositioning the car, which I didn't showcase, but it's possible at any, so it, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, it's the same to the, uh, let's say, the uh, uh, actual room you're in. So you can say, I want to use the actual room or I will ignore it, just give you an idea. Um, having something like a, uh, a, a booth on a, on a fair, so uh, normally you have quite a limited space. But uh, what we are doing at the moment, not to give too many insights, is that we are trying to open up the space uh, for one specific client. If uh, we include the actual props of the, of the uh, booth uh, within the HoloLens experience and make things possible which weren't in real life. And we, what we're doing, um, therefore, is we covering the whole Messehalle and make it uh, like like there would be just like everything would be um, a presentation, a stand, or a booth by just one company, and this is an opportunity you never had before. And therefore, if you want to have an anchored experience or location-based experience, no problem. What I'm sometimes doing when I showcase this um, to show the, um, the the opportunities as well is I place different kind of applications within different rooms. It's a virtual schnitzeljagd, so so more, and um, because. Everything I showed over here, and I didn't close the applications, they'll still be here, and they will be here tomorrow, and they will be here even next year if I don't delete them, because um, the, it, it, it creates spatial maps all the time. And uh, the applications are based on these spatial maps, and um, sometimes I, when I walk around, in the, uh, walk around in the office, I need to get rid of all this holo trash, which is still there because I didn't close it. So. Right, another question? or. Um, if not, then I have one uh, still that I was wondering about. You mentioned isolation uh, as, as a big factor when you're wearing these uh, goggles. Um, when you consider market penetration of the, the three big um, uh, VR solutions, uh, it's been, you know, I think they sold fairly well. I think it's around about 2 million installed uh, hardware base worldwide, but not amazingly well yet. It's it's sort of like still waiting for the big push. Do you think isolation is a, is a big factor? And I mean, Sony has tried to address it with party games where the person wearing VR goggles is playing with people on regular controllers. You've got Star Trek Bridge Crew where uh, people uh, are sort of connected um, online. Do you think that's that's the key element to getting this technology out to a mass, mar mass market? I wouldn't even say, uh, say it like this because it's depending on what you really want to achieve. It's a different, let's say, I would never say don't go for VR. It doesn't make any sense because if you are into the gaming industry or even for serious games, which can also be done in VR because we're also working on it. It's not just because we're working on it, but, but it makes sense sometimes. If you want to create um, a most realistic approach, then I would always go for VR uh, because you cannot achieve this with the device So at, at the moment. Um, and you don't have to be, it's not an, an, a one-person experience in VR. What I meant about the isolation is if you want to uh, if you want to bring this to another level, let's say on a point of sales and you want to talk to someone, there's a salesperson, there's even a, if you just imagine being on a museum or something like this, you can interact with the people. That's the difference. That's not so easy to achieve within classical VR because even people sometimes feel uncomfortable to uh, wear this kind of goggles and then they are exposed to everyone, feeling like naked uh, on the market. Because you do not... We made fun of, of our colleagues when they were wearing um, the, uh, the Vive for the first time, explored some experience and we really laughed like hell uh, because they were scared and everything like this. This is not going to happen. If they, the people look at you and point at you with the finger, you will recognize. <laughs> so that's the difference. Yeah. Thank you. Right, perhaps one last question from the audience if someone has no. Excellent, right. And uh, then, Pascal, thank you ever so much for your insight. Just once more. I want to thank you for your uh, intention, and please don't get me wrong, sometimes I sound rude, sometimes I sound blah, 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 but um, I take this very, very serious. It, I just, it's just the, the fact that I'm really having fun with what I'm doing at the moment, because it gives us a complete new setup to work and to be even better, a better version of, let's say, Pixel Mondo or whatever. But um, 
And so, therefore, I'm really thankful to be in here because we are not represented within Frankfurt this much, this, uh, because we are not the best in doing marketing. Uh, <laughs> But um, I would really, really love to be more part of this whole thing, and therefore I'm going to speak with you later on as well. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Once again, thank you so much. <laughs>